What's up, everyone? We're going to be talking about something that's either really exciting or really, really boring, and that is hashing algorithm migrations. So, um, this is me. You're probably wondering how I got here. Well, I decided to migrate from Bcrypt to Argon2 in one of my to-do list applications because I thought it'd be fun and challenging to go completely overkill with security's sake. Argon2 is a hashing algorithm that is just super crazy hardened. Um, it actually is consisted of three uh, different like flavors. One is called D, uh, Argon2D, or dependent, memory dependent. And that means, let's see, yeah, it, it's just super hardened against GPU attacks because it's memory intensive. Uh, Argon2I is memory or data independent, which means it's preferred for password hashing. And uh, Argon 2 ID is kind of a mixture between the two, just kind of like the catch all, which if you're not sure which one you should use, you should probably use that one. And so I'm just gonna implement that because it's, you know, gonna be a fun challenge. So we need to think, how can we run two, you know, of the same path or two different password algorithms in our application without causing a lot of trouble and without causing trouble to our users. So if we want to convert our users over to a new password hashing algorithm without invalidating their current credentials and making all of them do password resets all at once, well, thankfully that's actually not too terrible to implement. So what you'll want to do is find the signature of whatever your first, your initial hashing algorithm, whatever your password starts with. So for bcrypt, in this case, the uh, passwords actually start with dollar sign to b. If when authenticating a user, if their hash password begins with that, you know it's of a certain algorithm. And if it's the older kind, well, you can continue to verify with that hashing algorithms comparison function but when they do successfully authenticate, you can allow them to continue on as normal, but you will also take their password, their plain text password, rehash it in the new algorithm and store the new algorithm instead. So on the subsequent login, they're gonna skip that second, or they're gonna skip that first state where it's, you know, their password algorithm is gonna be a completely different um, signature. It's gonna be, you know, for argon to I think it's just dollar sign argon too. And so it's going to skip this first check altogether because, you know, it's not a bcrypt hash anymore, so it's not going to match that. And so we'll come down here and your user on a subsequent login will instead be using argon's verification function instead. So I don't think these are their actual um, function names, but this is what it looks like in pseudocode. And we'll actually go ahead and get to implementing that. So for my API, this is a really small to-do list app that I'm essentially just deploying for myself, but it's always fun to go with overkill, especially in terms of security. So it's nice to have like a super hardened um, API, even if it's just a goofy little thing just for me. So as of right now, everything is done with Bcrypt, but I have already imported argon2. So let me go ahead and pull in some of those imports. And this, by the way, is just my little password helper function um, so that I can use these in both my registration and login routes and in my passport strategy middleware. So in my passport strategy middleware, I, um, I'm utilizing local strategy for authenticating my local routes. And so here's where we'll be doing the meat and bones of what I was doing with that little flowchart earlier. So I'll just leave that be for the time being. And that validate function that we're pulling in is coming from my little password helper function, uh, my password helper file. And that's still gonna be the uh, bcrypt one. So we'll need to, you know, either rename that or move that over to a new name or something for when we get argon2 in here. So let me go ahead and pull in argon2 because we need to go ahead and start getting those functions in here. So argon2's uh, comparison algorithm is called, or comparison function is called verify. 
and their hash creation one is also called hash. So we're going to get a little conflict from the start from here because, well, shit, I mean, that's what decrypts already got named. But thinking about what we need to do, at this point, we are never going to be creating a new bcrypt hash. So we don't need hash, nor do we need the salt generation, since Argon2 will actually handle creating that salt for us behind the scenes. So this create hash function is now going to be all Argon's property. So what we'll need to do, um, it's still going to require the password but we're also going to want the options object to specify which specific uh, variant of argon2 that we want, which is ID, which is the mixture of the memory dependent and memory independent, so that we just have good overall security. And we'll also get to specify the memory cost, how many bytes of memory it will consume to create a hash. And so um, let's go ahead and do that. So. We require, yeah, the plain text password and then the optional options. So I'm going to say, all right, the type, and that's where we specify which uh, algorithm we want. And here is uh, Argon2's you know, wonderful typings. They have TypeScript support built in, so you don't have to install anything else except just the Argon2 package. And we will go ahead and implement argon2 and our memory cost aka the amount the bytes of memory it will cost to create a hash will be 2 to the 14th power which might seem like a bit for you know registration or for you know recreating a hash but i mean we're talking about like a second or so of you know time for that to happen which for a user registering isn't really too impactful, but for a brute force attempt, that is a, a significant time cost. So that is going to be a huge, 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 um, you know, it's going to impede any kind of brute force attack. So we've got a really nice solid hash that's getting returned. Um, and yeah, uh, we need to get, you know, the argon2 verification uh, function as well. So this is still bcrypt. So I'm going to rename it to bcrypt to validate just to make the distinction more clear. And I'm going to call this function uh, validate still, but that's going to be the argon2 one just by default. I'm going to send in the same order of uh, parameters. We're going to send the plain text password first and then the hash password second. Although I do think that argon2 takes them in the uh, flipped order. So argon2 will actually want the hash first and then the plain text password second. But that's it for getting our you know, functions set up. So, okay. Just thinking of what we've got in our passwords helper file here, we've got the ability to create a hash and that's gonna be only with argon2 because we are no longer creating uh, hashes with bcrypt. We also have a way of validating and verifying those argon2 hashes. But we are also temporarily retaining the bcrypt validation because this is going to allow us to let our users still log in initially with a bcrypt password bcrypt hash password before it gets rehashed. So uh, in here, this is where we get to start some of the magic that we saw in that flow chart earlier. So I'm just going to check to see if the user exists here first and foremost, and then we can get into more complex logic. So if the user doesn't exist, we're going to do the uh, password callback function of nulling out the error and saying our user object is false. We're not going to pass on that user object because you know it's undefined. It doesn't exist if that user you know isn't true. So in here we'll have some more fun nested logic. So if the user exists and if the user dot hash password starts with that you know 
dollar sign to b that means that this is a bcrypt hash password else is hashed with something else all right so we still have you know our solid conditions here if the user exists then we're going to be checking to see which algorithm uh, it's hashed with their password is hashed with otherwise we're going to go ahead and just null everything out and say hey we're not passing on the user object this request is invalid um, so yeah all right so if it is hashed with bcrypt well we need to get the bcrypt validation function to you know make sure that we do have a valid password because this validate function is now the argon2 validation function. So I'm going to import bcrypt validate. And here we can say, all right, well, if it starts with 2b, it's hashed with bcrypt. So we can say if await bcrypt validate, and bcrypt validate takes the password first and then the hashed uh, password second. So So if these match up, then we know that the user has logged in with good credentials. And if they haven't, then it's a shit login attempt and we'll just then they'll false them out. So if they have successfully validated with their credentials and it's a bcrypt encrypted password, the bcrypt hash password, well then we can say, all right, well, how about we create a new hash with argon2? So we'll go ahead and yank that function as well from my password helper utility file. And yet again, uh, that create hash, that's also linked in my registration route. So just by changing it here in my you know single source of truth for this function, I don't have to change anything for my registration route. When a user registers, it's now going to be argon2 only, which is pretty awesome. So big proponent of always extracting utilities out wherever you can it helps out so so much especially in you know weird complex projects like this where you might have started off with some users with you know a certain algorithm and you want to uh, rehash in a newer more hardened one so all right all right so uh, if they do successfully authenticate we'll say let's const uh, to hash equals await and then create hash and all it requires is the password because argon2 will take care of creating the salt for you and it also creates you know or it also takes care of how many rounds you want it to run through for your uh, memory cost so all we have to do is provide that password to argon2's hash function and it gives us what we want and then here, um, I actually don't think I've got a query in my database for updating users. Oh, yep, nope, I don't. So here I will have to do something like, you know, run a query that says set, you know, users or update users, you know, So yeah, uh, the two fields in my users table hashed and ID will be the user.hashed and user ID. Let me go ahead and boop, boop. So yeah, I would need a query like this to go ahead and update that user's entry in the table. I just don't have that query written out in my database yet, but that's where you would say, okay, well, if the user's you know successfully logging in with the correct password, we'll go ahead and quickly create a new hash. And then we'll go ahead and store that new hash in the database. So next time they log in, it's not going to start with 2b because it's going to be an argon2 password. So it's going to end up starting with, you know, dollar sign two or dollar sign argon2. And argon might actually have like a second one for the you know, variant or it might be included. 
I'm, I'm not exactly sure of their signature, but it'll start with argon2 and definitely not, you know, to be signifying that it's decrypt version 2. But after that, we can say, all right, well, the user's good. They have successfully logged in. Let's go ahead and delete, you know, the hash password out of memory off this user object because we're going to be passing it through to the next request. So I'm going to say delete user.hash so that we don't have the hash password hanging out in memory because the next step we're immediately doing is done null and we're passing on the user object to the downstream request so that whatever is using my you know local strategy uh, is able to you know successfully you know authenticate so we pass on the user if they've logged in with a bcrypt password and we additionally have that new hash saved in the database well what happens if they've already got the argon2 hash because let's say, you know, well, I mean, you want to do this, you know, obviously at the same time anyway. Well, how will they validate their password with the argon2 hash? Well, we still have that validate function that validates or verifies the argon2 uh, hash itself. And so we just need to check with that and say, all right, well, if it's, Starts with this, nope, it doesn't. It's not 2B, so it's an argon password, else. And we get to check here and say, all right, well, if await just the regular validate function, because that's the argon one, and that takes password and hash in those orders, so password user.hash. So if that's true, we get to just simply Yet again, delete that user.hash so we don't have that you know hash property sitting on the user object in memory, but we get to pass on the user object, so null out the error, and we pass on the user. And after that, well, what if they you know didn't successfully authenticate? Well, we will just say they didn't successfully authenticate. So that's it. That's all you need to do to have two hashing algorithms comparison functions live in your database. So over time, your users with the old algorithm, aka bcrypt in this case, as they continue to log in, more and more passwords will end up getting rehashed into the new style. So after some period of time, like, I don't know, maybe six or so months, then you'll have a pretty significant amount of users that will have had everything rehashed. And only, you know, after some period of time, you can run a query in your database to delete every, you know, hashed field where it begins with that or something. And that way you can just invalidate all the old ones. And then after that happens, just go ahead and, you know, deprecate the, you know, bcrypt validate functionality and clean all that up. But that is really all it requires to have both of those existing in unison in your code base. So, uh, yeah. Pretty easy peasy, relatively speaking. So if you're uh, planning on doing this kind of migration, good luck and happy coding.